Shalom. Double honors to Edward's apostle, great millstone, who rule and teach well, and the brothers is pushing the truth throughout the four corners of the earth. Hopefully, it's tuning in. Shalom. That is going to be going into this pestilence and famine that's going to increase and touch up on the evils that are going to be brought upon the face of the earth to try all nations because Israel has been scattered to all nations and a recompense for the heathens. For the wickedness they've done to the planet earth and mainly to the ch children of Israel. This is Jeremiah 46 and 28. Fear thou not, O Jacob, my servant, saith Yahweh, for I am with thee, for I will make for I will make a full end of all the nations, whether I have driven thee, but I will not make a full end of thee. So you so these nations will be thrown down, they will be beaten into submission, and that will, will be done by the, the sons of the most high. Which is Yahweh Shai, the, the elect, and the angels on down. You know, just those three, you know, those three different subjects, topics, adjectives, adjectives, right? That I just stated, you know. Yahweh Shai, who is an Israelite, the elect of the nation of Israel. And the angels will throw down all the nations pursuant to Daniel chapter, I believe, 2. As well, you know, Revelations chapter 2 and many, many scriptures that goes into that. But I will not make a full end of thee, but correct thee in measure, yet will I not leave thee wholly unpunished. So yes, two-thirds of the nation of Israel will be taken out. And this is also stated again in uh, Jacob's Trouble, which is Jeremiah 46 is going into Jacob's Trouble. This is Jeremiah 30 and 7. The last for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. And Jacob is a Hebrew, is Yaquab, which means the supplanter. Now verse 11. For I am with thee, saith Yahweh, to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations, whether I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee. But I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. So it was re reiterated in um, Isaiah. So um, this is all end time prophecy. Jacob's trouble um hasn't happened yet and we're we're approaching Jacob's trouble and it's gonna be a very disastrous time for the planet Earth. Jeremiah fifteen Jeremiah fifteen and and two and it shall come to pass if they say unto thee whether shall we go forth then thou shalt tell them, Thus said Yahweh, Such as are for death to death, and such as are for sword to the sword, and such as are for the famine to the famine, and as such as for the captivity to the captivity. And uh, that famine is going to be one of the worst ways to go out too, man. I know it's in limitations. Let's just type this up right here. Lamentations 4 and 9. They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. For these pine away, stricken through for want of the fruit of the field. So it's better to get shot in the stomach and bleed out than to starve to death because your body is literally eating itself. You know? If you get shot to death, it's going to take, if you're bleeding out, maybe lose consciousness after about three or four hours and you die. You know? So it's really only a couple hours of, of, of pain and then death and starvation is a month plus of pain, man. This is uh, Jeremiah 15 and 3. And I will appoint over the four kinds, saith Yahweh, the sword to slay. And that this modern day sword is the, is the gun. And you know, depending on the length of Jacob's trouble will determine how... Uh, how many people st stick to melee weapons? Because Jacob's trouble, it will be a time period. You know, it could be 10 years. It could be 7 years. It could be 5 years. It could be a year. It could be 6 months. We really don't know. But um, uh, I think it's the CIA or the FBI. They did a report on how um, in order to survive the apocalypse, any type of apocalyptic situation, 
you would need at least 7,000 rounds of ammo for the first six months. And I think once you do the math, that's 180 days. Let's do the math right now. So, um, 100, so 7,000 divided by 180, that's what, six months, right? 180 times 2, that's around 365, ain't it? Yeah, 360, so 7,000 divided by 180, that's 38.8, round that up, that's 39 bullets. You got to dump the whole clip, 30-round clip. <laughs> you know, Jake, you know, the rest of these heathens got to dump a whole clip every day for the for six months straight in order to survive the collapse. No, you know, that's that's talking more along the lines of, um, you know, these people in the city, you know, because that's where the large group of people will be, you know, in more rural rural areas uh they'll stick together a bit more but you know raiders marauders right these werewolf preppers whatever uh will will be going grouping up and attacking these cities you know typical human stuff but it's going to be on a, a crazier scale because they're probably going to be on some cannibalism and straight torture like real torture real gruesome and and it's going to be it's going to be a lot of stuff to uh that's going to be out here that uh our minds can't even comprehend right now. I'm going to reread. I'm going to start at uh, the middle of uh, verse 3. And the dogs to tear, and the fowls of the heaven, and the beasts of the earth to devour and destroy. So you're going to have golden eagles out here, man, souping up, jacking people up. Man, a golden eagle can dive and slit your throat easy, man. Like, I seen a video of a golden eagle. They're so smart and intelligent, they grab the goats and drag them off a cliff because they know the goats, if they uh, start falling off the cliff, they'll their bodies will bust open on the rocks and they'll die, man. You're going to have birds out here, Jack and Jacob, and, you know, scavengers that come through and eat the corpses. Corpse, and, you know, dogs. These dogs going to um escape from the backyards and the homes or some people just going to let their dogs go free or whatever. They're going to start ganging up and eating people. And the rest of these beasts of the earth, man, polar bears, lions, mountain lions, man, it's gonna be it's gonna be a bloodbath out here. And the reason why it's gonna be a bloodbath for the evil that has been done to the planet Earth and to the children of Israel and the evil that the children of Israel has done, that's why it's gonna be so uh, brutal out here. It's gonna be real, real brutal, and you gotta be girded up in the faith. And like a man, a real man, because that real masculinity is having the fear of the most high. That's true masculinity right there. Let's go into these pestilences right, right now. Actually, there's one over here I wanted. This is second there's fifteen and forty nine. I will send plagues upon thee, widowhood, poverty, famine, sword, and pestilence, and I will waste thy house with destruction and death. And that's gonna happen on the largest scale known to man. On the um in uh the whole entire earth, but the the concentration of this will be in Babylon the Great. Cause that great deliverance will be um in Babylon great Jeremiah 28 and 8 the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old of old prophesied both against Many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. So that's how you can identify the prophets now. They'll be doing what the prophets of old have been doing. And the only ones that's doing that, calling on a true name, having a 100% truth, is the great millstone on down. Nobody else is talking about the C-Hip. Nobody else is calling on a true name with on, on top of that. 
so on and so forth. But let's get into um it's another one I wanted. Let me just keep scrolling till I find it. All right, perfect. This is Ezekiel 7 and 15. The sword is without, and a pestilence and a famine within. He that is in the field shall die with the sword, and he that is in the city, famine and pestilence, shall devour him. So in these major populous areas, a lot of people will die from starvation and diseases because uh, being around all these humans, these dead bodies and trash and, you know, all that stuff, and the food supply will be cut off. It's going to be a lot of people out here dropping dead, you know, from the you-know-what. That got that pierced their arms. And uh, of course, you know, it's gonna be people getting jacked up out here in the cities. But uh in these rural 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 R U R A L areas, right? The countryside is gonna be a lot it's gonna be gunfights over there too. Mainly because it's gonna be a, a decent fight for resources out in these, you know, areas. Because in those areas, you know, like you say, you're gonna have the homesteaders, you're gonna have there's a lot more preppers there. You know, and people, these marauders are going to be uh, more, um, not all of them, but the ones that have some type of intelligence will target those areas. You know, these heathens. And, you know, Jake, Jake, Jake's simple. Jake just going to lay down to the slaughter. Let's get the scripture on that. Psalms 44 and 22, yeah, for the sake, for thy sake are we killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. And Jake going to be, the two-thirds is going to be a good slaughter, man. They going to get, they going to get, um, their blood is going to sprinkle the earth. The blood of Israel will sprinkle the earth one last grand time. And it's never going to, our blood is never going to sprinkle the earth ever again. And then this is restated again in Romans 8 and 36. As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. And, you know, I seen this one guy. And it was stated again in Acts 8, 32. Um, I seen this one dude. I think it was a brother. It was a brother. It was a it was one of the brothers, the Akium, that was uh, commentating over a video. Of, I think it was an Edomite. Going into how I think I think he was like going against his people about how they don't want to use the Old Testament. They only want to start at Matthew to Revelations and then cherry pick and pick certain scriptures between Matthew and Revelations. Um, he was um, he was saying how like um, I forgot, but it was like a good portion of the New Testament, like a good chunk of the New Testament. Is just re reiterating things from the Old Testament and the Apocrypha. So, I mean, it's, it's many, many ways, you know, it's not hard to destroy a Christian. And what, what I mean by a Christian is Christianity, you know, because all a Christian means is a follower of Yahweh Shai, which is, um, which a Christianity clearly doesn't do. Christianity is white supremacy. Now, let's get up, um, Let's get, let me get one more, or a few more. What was it? I think, go to 2nd Ezra's 9. The 2nd Ezra chapter 9. Scroll through a little bit. This is 2nd Ezra's 9 and 3. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of these things from the day that were before thee, even from the beginning. And this is re restated in Matthew, the 24th chapter, man, of, of roars of the people and earthquakes. 
I'm going to read, reread verse 4. Then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of these things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest, even so the times also the highest have plain beginnings and wonder and power works, powerful works, and endings in effect and signs. And every one that, that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, and whereby ye have believed. So that's uh stated again and um all throughout the uh all throughout the scriptures, period, you know. Faith without works is dead. You know, and faith is, you know, pretty much just believing without seeing. So faith, belief, believing, believed, faith, synonyms, works without faith, without works, dead. Verse eight shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Verse 12. Actually, let's get more context. Verse 11. And they that have loathed my law, these two thirds, which they had yet liberty, which is done by Yahweh Shai, the water Yahweh Shai, and when as yet placed of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it. Despised it. So they're not trying to call on the true names of the Most High. They're not trying to acknowledge their Israelites. They're not trying to follow the true doctrine. They're not trying to have faith. They're not trying to be meek, so on and so forth. This verse 12, the same must know it after death by pain. So Jake going to get slaughtered out here. And everybody that's talking crap, man, you talking crap to Yasharala, man. You, you put your hands on Yasharala. You you should know, you know, we, we telling you what's your end going to be. Starting with, the, you know, Jake first, then the rest of you heathens, man. Then Esau second, man. And then the rest of you heathens. Go to chapter 10. Actually, no, no, no. Not 10. No. Twenty-four. Actually, no. Isaiah thirteen. In this off in Isaiah thirteen. Isaiah thirteen from the top, verse one: the burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. Amos, Amos. Let's see how you pronounce that, man. Actually, it's it's all good. Scroll down a little bit. Verse five: They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even to even of Yahweh, and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. So, just talking about the daughter of Babylon, Babylon the Great, the United States of America. This is verse 8. And they shall be afraid. Pains and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Verse 11. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible that's going to you Edomites and the rest of you heathens, two thirds. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man that is the even a man that the golden even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. So the Israelite man, the elect, will be the most the hottest thing, you know, hot and ready, the most hottest thing on the planet Earth. 
will be the elect men in those days. And here on out, man, it's not just going to stop then. It's going to be once the elect is known from that point on and forever, the elect is going to be hot. That elect man is going to be the greatest thing on the earth. Starting with Yahweh Shah, because he was the first elect. I'm going to end that off right there. Shalom.